there's of course not the only game that is that got released because actually there's a second game again again it is the same there are currently two games released so yeah and now i'm gonna play the second game which hopefully start no yeah. it did start so wait the moon uh, this game is however a bit um, different because ladies gentlemen and everything in it outside of those two welcome heaven's gate <laughs> and as you can see it is it is not a normal not a normal hello charlotte game it is actually a vision novel meaning that i will probably do voices i will not however this game this game is a bit special now because first of it will not take so much like the game i mean it's actually the same however um one key thing is this has literally nothing to do with any kind of story. There will be no references, except for the characters themselves, of course. And, um, <clears throat> yo, it is completely an alternate universe, like Charlotte said in the beginning of the previous game. But this time it's literally alternate universe, because it's an official novel. And all their games till now were just RPGs. So, yeah, let's start. Uh, works. Evering presents or Evering Evans Gate. Number one, Vincent Fennell. Vincent Fennell is watching a small trail of ants go by, his gaze is remaining disinterested. Approach him out of curiosity. Oh, winged ants, that's rare. Hi, Charles. They're so small. That's good. Aksaryaki. Look. Gets up from his knees and steps closer to the ant trail. Also... Is it really just me? Or no, no, there's no music at all. We must be like gods to them, don't you think? Those was Vincent picks one's up. Just one tuck and the wing rips off with an alarming ease. Stop it! Let it go! What are you being so upset about? Just because we're bigger, that doesn't mean we should hurt them. Hmm, it's just a back door. Oh. Uh, mom says even the smallest lives matter. My mom says bugs are annoying. Could my ask my mom, but... If, if you don't stop, please, I'll tell the nurses. The boy simply gets up and leaves. What's up with him? From that, from that day on, I decide that I don't like Vincent Fennell at all. Jesus. Or Tassos. It's lunch break. Everyone's wearing stickers and hoarding tassos, tassos, a recent fad among kids. Vincent is surrounded by children who are mar marveling at his collection. Oh, this one's super rare. Where did you get it? It was in my chips. <gasps> Lucky. Do you want it? <gasps> can, can I have it? I can have it. But I don't have anything good to portray to you. I don't mind. Just choose one that you don't have then. Try it with me too. Me too. What are you looking at, Charlie? What are they too? Ah, uh, no. Mom says chips are bad for health. <sighs> Boring. Vincent, look, I have holographic ones. Ugh. What's so special about them? <laughs> All he has is a pack of tasers. 
Austin thought I'd trip and drop the box with the classroom turtle that I was carrying. The nurses yell at me and make me stand in the corner for half an hour. I play my Donald Winston too. Mother. When I'm five, we move into a flat swarming with cockroaches and pigeons living on the balcony. Ugh. Why is this place so dirty, mom? I ask. The person who lived here wasn't very cleanly, is mother's answer. I want to go back home, I did tell her. Why did we have to leave? We won't be staying here for long, dear, mother says, and I want to believe her. The surrounding dirt makes my skin crawl. Later I overhear our neighbors talking and learn that the former owner was a drug addict. Well, died of overdose, they say. Okay, you know what? I, because of lack of music, I will. Editing Roman, please. Hopefully, you edit some kind of good music in here because I can't work with that. It's no sound. And I want sound. Please. When I raise my voice, Mother tells me to keep quiet. When I walk around the house, Mother says that my footsteps are too loud. When I become excited, Mother primates me for misbehaving. One evening, she has a breakdown over unsorted clothes in the drawers. We're talking normally. Then the next moment, the house is filled with shouting and sounds of my clothes being violently thrown on the floor. There must be something else she's angry at. But I'm too young to understand. I apologize over and over, promising I won't do that ever again, as if I committed a grave sin. I'm sorry, mother. I can make everything right. Oh. I won't become a burden. Concert. Yeah, party. Finally, some music. We're having a concert to celebrate autumn. Our nurses are wearing dresses with paper maple leaves sewn in onto them. I recite a poem aloud, trying not to mess it up halfway. It has four lines. I'm so nervous that my voice comes out too quietly, even though I recite it perfectly. Means it got six lines. Must be because the nurses think he's the smartest in the group. Oh, even he, he even goes to chess club. <laughs> Vincent recites the poem in a monotonous voice like he doesn't give a care. Hmm. Vincent's almost always the last to be picked up by his parents. Sometimes nobody comes and he just goes home alone. Tell mom about that and she totally freaks out. How can a child go home by himself? She exclaims, shocked. What are his parents thinking? I don't know what to say to that. Well, it's day. A normal, completely day. It's a normal day. Everyone gets their drinks and kinder surprises for lunch. Okay. I got sick and threw up onto my festive shirt. I don't like it much anyway. Mom did, though. I mean, kinder surprise eggs are actually really nice. I don't like it, but I don't like the chocolate. I'm more of the, ooh, nice toy kind of guy. And I'm mostly gifting the chocolate to somebody else. Hey. That's also the way I don't like um, Kinder bonbons. Which are, well, just milk, little milk, milk eggs in milk chocolate. Or yeah, there's a lot of things that Kinder a Kinder chocolate bar, for example, called the uh, Kinder Milchschnitte, which is just milk, a milk cream mixed with honey and some very a bit crumbly chocolate dough thing in between. The only thing I can really say that I like is Kinder Pingui, which is just milk cream, really milk cream, not like the milk honey mix. 
and um, in between the milk cream, there's a little bit of chocolate, and the whole thing is just covered in chocolate, and mm, I love it. All the other things, eh, not so really. I mean, Kinder Country even. Uh, I Kinder Country, so I, I, eh. I have tried it once, and no, uh, it was okay. Mm, Kinder Hippo. That, that is that, that that is a thing that I like though. Hmm. Anything else that I can think of? Of Kinder? Of Kinder? No. When is this at the nurse's office too? He tripped and scrapped his knee. Oh, of course. The nurse is drawing a mat on it with green antiseptic. Cap seems bad, but he's not even wincing. He's there, staying. Blank. Doesn't he feel any pain? Maybe he's actually a robot. I want to ask him that. But my headache is too strong, so I ignore him. All I want is to go home and watch cartoons in bed. Mm. Thankfully, Mom's quick to come to my rescue. Afterwards, he stay at home for a whole week. Ooh, nice. New stage. Mm. Of life. Time passes fast. My kindergarten graduation album is filled with pictures of other kids running around and a macro photograph of myself. Some kind of... Medieval clothing from the photo shoot. Okay. It's my favorite one, but I'll never admit it. I can barely contain my excitement for the first day of school. Vincent goes to a different one, but it doesn't matter. I didn't like him much anyway. Elementary school is boring. I solve all the problems in my math workbook in one evening and as a consequence end up dying of boredom at actual lessons. Oh, Shouldn't there be a faster way to do this? As the school days pass, I get so excited about my intellectual abilities that I point out others' mistakes every time I notice them. The girl sitting next to me seems to enjoy my company, mainly because she gets to copy my answers during tests. Why do I have a feeling I know who did this? In the meantime, I find a new way to make friends. All you have to do is buy them food or share yours. Ah, uh, about that. And everyone will get around you, excited to get sweets for free. I spend all my pocket money on snacks and still end up being chosen last at PE session. You're the pro. It takes me some time and an after school beating to learn not to poke my nose into others' business. It did do. It's not my fault people cheat on tests. Ah. I'm just doing what's right. At least, that's what I think. Apparently, people don't like snitches. Nor do they like being responsible or proper. While I'm doing everything not to be a burden. They were giving their all to cause trouble. I feel like this will take some time to sink in. Over the years I learned to keep my mouth shut. From a moderately talkative kid I turned into a complete class ghost. By the end of fourth year, it won't still calls me by my last name. Reunion. Oh. In middle school, we see each other again. Vincent looks more frail than I remember him being. Maybe it's just that I've gotten taller. When he sees me, he smiles. In fact, he smiles to everyone. The usual unchanging blank expression that he had in kindergarten is gone from his face, replaced with a mask. It's unsettling. I don't smile back. Somehow we end up doing a class project together. By the time I gather the courage to ask someone to invite me, everyone else had already found a partner. But there was an open spot in his group. The two other kids just want easy marks, so only the two of us actually end up working. Vincent is surprisingly nice to work with. He's a good team player, very considerate and giving his all to complete the task. 
a complete contrast to most of the kids. For the first time in a while, I have fun working in a group. An incoming message from Charles. Here, I'm sending over the presentation files. Great work. Let's do our best tomorrow. He's, he's thankful for my effort? Must be the first time in five years of school. The move that I put his name first on the project's title slide. It's a project presentation day. Vincent, who was chosen as our group uh, group's representative, has a clear, powerful voice. Unlike me, who gets so anxious that I start to stumble on every word, earning giggles from classmates. I feel that. I hate myself for it. Regardless, our group gets the highest mark. Maybe teamwork isn't half bad, I catch myself thinking. Wiggling. Vincent loses consciousness during one of our PE's lessons. I've never really noticed this before, but he really has the worst stamina in class. While I fail all, all the speed tests, I can endure running long distances just fine. He, however, looks completely exhausted after just a few laps. After overhearing one of the conversations between teachers, I learned that Vincent has health complications. Haha, <laughs> Fennel's not running again. I heard he has a weak heart. Or was it an anemia? Yeah. He's the best student in class. Maybe he's pushing, pushing himself too hard. People like that don't lie, live long. My uncle died from a stroke. Really? Vincent? Dying? The possibility has never occurred to me before. Maybe children don't think too deeply about life and death in general. I look at him sitting on a bench near the teacher, watching us run. We never really talk. But I've been watching him for a while. So to me, it feels like we share a connection. And we get a warhol. I often volunteer to stay behind on class duty, and Rita Valho gets pulled into it. The other girls call her smelly and cout, and make her do things instead of them. <laughs> do I want to ask why? So right now she's unenthusiastically scrubbing a dirty desk with a wet rag. You should use the detergent to scrub this off. Don't tell me what to do, Eiler. Why are you even here? It's not your turn to clean. I like cleaning. Or more like I can trust anyone with it. Oh, here's the question. Are we now in some kind of a Japanese setting? Or is it now like a school in as as unknown country? Probably that. That's like that. Uh, mm. No one's too sloppy and lazy to properly clean all the dust. Just thinking of sitting behind a dirty desk makes my skin troll. That worked right now? Weirdo. You can go home. I plan to stay here after lessons anyway. I have piano class coming up in two hours. Just enough time to clean and do homework. No, I'll stay. They're waiting outside. If I go too early, they might think I'm slacking off. Damn, that's complicated. Okay. Clean in silence. I don't really know what to talk about with her. Henrietta doesn't seem like she's up for discussion homework either. Henrietta? Yes? Give me your hand. Hmm? I place a candy in it. Here, yeah, good work today. Carrying snacks around still remains as a habit of mine. Might as well try to win Warhol's goodwill with it. And it just stays severely silent. There isn't anything wrong with it, right? Unless you don't like barberry flavor. I'm not gonna ask. Oh. Thanks. You're welcome. Henrietta awkwardly stumbles out of the classroom without saying so much as a goodbye. Weeks later, we start talking during lunch breaks sometimes. The other girls mock and tease her for it. But Henrietta learns to talk back. Maybe she's more confident about herself when she feels less alone. 
Rick incoming messages from Henri. Okay, listen up, Isler. We are gonna get rid of your acne. I'm gonna send you all. A, uh, I'm gonna send you a list of skincare products and food to avoid. But mom, no buts. For a clean freak, you sure hate looking after yourself. Pest. Henry's pest.